What's up guys? My car is still in road trip mode, so it's a little bit messy, but I wanted to make a video since I've had this BRZ for about a year now. Is it worth buying? First off, let me give you guys the backstory about this car. So if you know and if you've been following me, I've had two Mazda Speeds. I had a Mazda Speed 3 and a Mazda Speed 6. The Speed 3 is my first car that I had for almost four years, and then the Speed 6 was a car that I got to replace that, and I had that for about three months. It was a not a good car. I'm not saying they're bad cars, but the one that I had wasn't very good, but that's a whole different story. So I went shopping for a new car, a newer car that I would obviously have to take a payment on, and I was cross shopping the GTI, the Mark 7 GTI, the Focus ST, the Fiesta ST, and then the FRS and the BRZ. So I, I've been through the whole hot hatch turbo phase and they're cool cars, but I wanted to switch it up a little bit. At first I was pretty hesitant to even get into this platform, but after a while the looks and just the aftermarket kind of sold me on it. So I started looking for an FRS. and. The FRS's in San Antonio at the time were all automatic, so I was like, okay, cool. So I started looking at Fiesta STs again, and I was this close to buying a Fiesta ST until I saw this BRZ up in Austin. And I went up and looked at it, red, already on coilovers, it would look perfect, 30,000 miles, like, I was sold. I was like, I want this car. So here we are, a year later, and I have it. And I want to give you guys kind of just my main reasons of, like, why I think you should get one too, and why I think that... This might stir up some controversy, but this platform is the best bang for your buck for under twenty thousand dollars. You know, obviously within reason. I know you can get Skylines and all this other stuff, but like you know, for a newer car, a daily driver, in my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck. The first thing I like about it, especially the BRZ over the FRS, and I'm going to give my opinion on the BRZ and not the FRS. I'm just going to kind of maybe compare and contrast them a little bit, but. The BRZ has all the nice amenities of a daily driver, so I have keyless entry, heated seats, leather and Alcantara seats, dual climate control and nav system, you know, all the like good stuff of a daily driver. The FRS was more bare bones, um, not as friendly as a daily driver. I mean, I guess it would be similar, but this has more creature comforts than the FRS. So I really like that about the BRZ. And in my opinion, it's worth the extra money over the FRS. The second thing I like about this car is the steering. The steering in this car is perfect. Like, it's so on point. It, the weight is perfect, just great steering. The second thing I like about this car is the shifter. It's very short throw, very notchy, feels really good. It's really hard to miss gears in this car, so it's a really good shifter. I would say, next to the S2000, this is probably my favorite shifter. And even a little bit before the 997, 911. I really like this shifter a lot. The third thing is the looks. This car gets a crazy amount of attention. I'm not really sure why because I see a lot of them around. I mean, obviously mine's modified, but this car gets a lot of attention from people that don't know cars. I've had people that ask me if it's a Porsche. Um, it, I don't know, it's crazy. Like, it's really, really crazy. You know, that's a Subaru, like, stuff like that. Which is good and a bad thing, but it gets a lot of good attention. It's a really good looking car in my opinion, and that's one of the things that I like about it. It's just so, customizable you can go full crazy do rocket bunny kits you know different wide body kits or you can keep it stock body there's so many things you can do to this car which is the next thing is the aftermarket there's literally nothing you can't do to this car you can get retro gauge clusters you can get new front bumpers wide body kits new seats new steering wheels you can black out the interior trim pieces exhaust superchargers turbos pretty much everything to this car. Engine swaps, there's been 2JZ swaps, LS swaps, it's wild. One of the main concerns I had about this car was the speed. You know, everybody says, oh, the BRZ and the FRS are slow. In comparison to some other cars, they're not exactly fast, but this car has never felt slow to me. When you're going second, third, fourth gear in the city, you know, in roads that aren't the highway, it feels adequately quick. I'm not saying it's a fast car by any stretch of the means, but it feels quick enough to have a good time, especially because of the red line's decently high, it's fun to rev out. I've never really had a problem with the power of the car, and then my car is bone stock engine wise since I've had it, so I think that says enough about the power of the car. And then on top of that, you can get a header, a tune, and run E85, and you can be as fast as like a 350Z. So in my opinion, that's not slow, it's not going to be a drag racer, but also, at the same time, you can get a supercharger kit for five or six grand, sometimes even less, you know, including a tune and all that stuff. But 
you throw that on, you make 330 of the wheels on E85, and you're rolling with fast cars. You know, bolt-on Evos, bolt-on STIs. Someone, somebody on the forum said they ran a 12.5 in the quarter mile with slicks on a supercharged E85 tune. So, that's pretty damn quick. My dad's Audi R8 runs a 12.5 in the quarter mile. So, I'm just saying, you can make these things pretty quick for relatively cheap. The last thing was rear wheel drive. Now, I didn't really know what it was like to drive a front engine rear wheel drive car until I bought this car. I mean, I drove the 911, which is obviously rear engine, rear wheel drive, which is a lot of fun, but this is a totally different driving experience than the 911. Um, I didn't want to go back to front wheel drive. I didn't want to get all wheel drive. I live in Texas. It doesn't snow down here. So rear wheel drive is what I wanted. And with this platform, you get it. You get rear wheel drive. You get the 2700 pound curb weight you know you get a lot of fun in this car and I think that's what makes up for the perceived lack of power is just the amount of fun that you can have without going 120 miles an hour down the highway even though you can go 120 miles an hour down the highway in this car it's not that slow so another thing I like are these seats I daily drive this car I drive this car a lot and these seats are really really good I'm obviously a pretty skinny dude but I don't, I'm not sure how they would be for a bigger guy, but they hold you in really well. The leather is nice and soft. The Alcantara is good. The only thing about the Alcantara in the summer is it gets a little bit hot, but it's not too big of a complaint. I mean, I live in Texas where it just gets dumb hot anyways, so any car is going to get hot. But these seats are really good. These seats hold you good, so if you're doing canyon driving, autocross, they hold you in well. But at the same time, if you want to go on a long drive, they're nice and supportive, soft. They feel really good for any kind of driving. Another thing I like about this car is the storage space. If you fold down these back seats, the trunk is actually pretty big. You can hold four full-size wheels with tires in this car because I think they actually designed that from the factory to hold four of the stock wheels and tires to go to track days. So, pretty interesting. So, I've been able to hold a lot of stuff in the trunk. And even the back seats, even though they're not usable, I've actually been able to hold four people in this car. It's not fun by any stretch of the means, but it is possible. Some things I dislike about this car, and there's really not many. I guess the first thing would be the stock head unit. Sometimes the Bluetooth doesn't want to connect, and it's a little bit, you know, you have to push a couple times to get the buttons to work, but really not a big complaint because it's just a double din. You can swap it out really easy anyways. Um, another thing that I don't like about this car is the road noise. It's a sports car. It's Japanese. You know, it's kind of a given, but I would say it's no worse than like a Civic or a Corolla, but there's definitely a decent amount of road noise. Other than that, I can't really think about any complaints about the car. I mean, really, it's just... It's a great car. In my opinion, the BRZ front end looks great. Like I think that's what makes this car stick out is it just looks a little bit more mature and classy than the FRS. Um, obviously, I still like the FRS. I just think this is my preferred car, and I'm glad that I ended up going with this versus the FRS. But those are kind of my overall impressions over the year I've had it. I've been getting 25 miles per gallon combined city and highway. I would say I drive about 65 city and 35 highway. So 25 is pretty good for a car like this. Um, on the highway, it gets 30 all day. Um, it's just a really good daily driver car. And like I said, you can make it quick with the money thrown into it. You know, if you, you can take this platform and pretty much make it whatever you want to make it. And I think that's the great thing about it. So now that these things are dropping in price, I would definitely recommend picking one up. I've seen FRSs go as low as like $13,000. I picked up my BRZ for seventeen dollars with 30,000 miles on it. So you can work with it. I would definitely recommend paying the extra money for the BRZ, especially if you're going to daily drive it. But if you just want to have like a track car, then by all means get the FRS because you're probably going to strip it down and do all that stuff. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. There's going to be plenty of BRZ and car videos on the way soon. I've got three cars this week that I'm reviewing, so I'm really looking forward to that. Follow me on Instagram. I'll link that in the description below. And that's about it. I'll see you all next time. Peace.